All right, welcome to this tutorial on how to alter your dance tunes to suit your needs about how many people are actually dancing. We're going to use a software program called Reaper. So um, all you're going to do is go to this website, cocos.com slash Reaper, and you're going to download the software and install it. I'm not going to go over how to do that um, because that would make this a really long video. But anyway, once you have downloaded that, open it up. You see here I have Reaper opened and I am going to insert my dance tune. So first thing I'm going to do is just double click in this blank space right here and you'll see that it creates a new track, the swim lane going to the right. I want to insert my dance tune. So insert media file and I happen to know that my dance tune is over here and it's called Upon a Summer's Day. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab the edge of this thing here so that I can see my file. Now if I left mouse click on it and drag it back and forth you can move it along in time on the swim lane. And when I'm gonna be zooming in and out and I'm doing that with the scroll wheel of my mouse. That's uh, a, a default in, in Reaper. Okay, so the f first thing we're going to do is um, take a listen to the song. Turn it down a little bit right there. So this first couple of repeats there, that's the verse. And right here is the chorus. The first repeat of the chorus. Here's the second. And this particular song has three repeats. Here's the third. All right. And it does that three times throughout the song. Well, we've discovered that that particular recording isn't going to work for us. We need a song that has only two repeats of the chorus each time. So we're going to use our technology here to uh, bend this song to our will. Now I'll try to go a little bit slow because uh, if you haven't worked with audio software before this might be a little confusing but you can always rewind and watch what I did and listen to what I said again. Okay um, we're going to want the ruler up here to show us we want measures and beats up there. In fact, I'll just choose measures and beats all by itself. Okay. And now you can see, as I zoom in here, this is the beginning of the first measure. Second, third, fourth. What I'm going to do here, this is a metronome. And this little wrench over here tells us under project settings what our project tempo is. Our beats per minute is 120. So let's listen to 120 with this little metronome going. And that actually sounds pretty close to the tempo of the song. And if we're lucky, we'll have something that's very close to this tempo. And we can always alter the tempo, but as long as the song is consistent, we can get close enough. First thing we're going to want to do is find the downbeat of the song by looking at its blobs right here. By the way, I'm zooming vertically by holding the control key down and using my mouse wheel. Okay, so without the click track, try that again. Okay, right here is the downbeat. Okay, so we're going to want that to happen right on a measure. So let's shorten up this little blank space here. This is there so that the dance master or mistress can press the button on the uh, player and then get back to the group before the song starts. But uh, for our purposes here, let's just uh, grab the end of this with our mouse and we're just gonna drag it to the right. It's not erasing anything, it's just shortening the file. Okay, so this is the downbeat right here. Now you notice that when I move it, it moves in increments. We want to use that later, but for now we want to undo the snap, which is this little icon of a magnet. This is going to want to be the downbeat 
on the beginning of a measure. Okay, now let's see how close 120 is to the beat of our song. Okay, it's, it's close, but you can hear that the metronome is a little bit too slow. So here's where you do a little trial and error. Go back to the project settings. Let's try 130. Every time you do this, the grid will shift, so you have to find your downbeat again. Okay, downbeat's right here, and want it right on the beginning of the measure. Now let's see if 130 is better. Okay, 130 is too fast. So let's go back and try. 125. And we'll repeat what we did earlier. Find the downbeat. Downbeat is here. Let's put it right there. Turn the metronome back on. That's pretty darn close. That's extremely close. So we've, we've pretty much found our tempo, which is 125. Okay, now what we want to do is uh, get familiar with a couple of these tools up here. And the, uh, the one that we want to turn on now is called the Snap 2 control, which is this magnet. The reason we want to do that is so that we can, whenever we click, be right on one of these lines here that are musically correct. So as you can see, the song starts, we have it starting here on measure three is the downbeat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. So now what we need to do is mark where these choruses are because there's three of them at three different points in the song and we're going to Cut that down to two. And it's still the verse. Now you'll notice something here. The, uh, the tempo is really, really close, but it isn't exact. So the longer we go into the song, the more it's going to drift off this grid a little bit. So it, that's okay. Um, it's close enough for our purposes, but whenever we make some of these cuts and these marks, we're going to want to get fine with our um, movements here, which means we have to turn off the snapping. So you see that beat right there is a little bit off from this downbeat. So since this is where the chorus is and where the cuts are going to be, we need it to be closer to the grid at this point in the song. So we move it with the snap off and now turn it back on and zoom out okay and that's, that's the beginning of the chorus right here boom so with snap on what I'm gonna do here is press the M on the keyboard which makes a mark and up here I'm gonna double click on the marker and say chorus one and that means it's the first repeat of the chorus. Okay, here is the second repeat of the chorus. So I press M, chorus two. Here is the beginning of the third repeat of the chorus. Okay, we're going to go through the rest of the song and find the other two places where the chorus appears and do exactly what we did here. I'm going to pull the cooking show technique and, uh, and say, here's one I did earlier. Okay, and we're back, and this is the one I just pulled out of the oven here. So you'll see we've got the chorus three repeats the first time. And 
then it happens again here, and then it happens again here. All right, three choruses, all three repeats are marked. Now what we need to do is we need to cut out the center portion. We're going to cut out the center chorus or chorus number two in each of these. Just to show you, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, cut the selected area right there. That's actually what we're going to be doing later. But um, it didn't actually delete anything because I can grab a hold of this here and just pull that audio back. See, it's still the same file. It just sort of um, broke it into two, and uh, that's called non-destructive editing, which is really cool. But anyway, just so you know that in case you make a mistake. So I'm going to undo that. <laughs> All right, now... I did something here a minute ago I need to show you how to do. It, I marked off, again, using the uh, making sure that the snap is on so that I can make sure I get right on these lines. I selected chorus number two. And you can see that the selection stays there no matter where I click, which is excellent. If you want to get rid of this, just hit the escape button and the selection goes away but now I'm going to go ahead and select it again. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, we're going to start from the end of the song. It's very important because as we mess with pulling parts of the song out, everything to the right of it is going to be affected. So um, if we do it and fix it from the right and move left, then uh, we'll, we'll be good to go. Okay, so I am going to come over here. I'm going to right mouse click on the selection. And I'm going to come down to where it says cut selected area of items. Be careful that you don't cut items because that will cut everything. You just want to cut what's in the selection. Click on that. All right. And now with the make sure your snapping is still on. You're just going to left mouse click on this part. Oops. I, uh, I'm glad I made that mistake. Um, you have to click in the blank space to unselect these after you do the cut. Otherwise, it will move them both. So um, make sure that uh, I'm going to back up and I'm going to do that again. Okay, so I come over here, cut selected area of items. Now click in the middle so that when I drag this around, this won't move as well. They're not both selected. Okay, so I'm going to grab this and move it right over to the border. And because snapping is turned on, it will butt right up against it. Now we want to listen to whether it makes musical sense or not, to whether it sounds seamless. That's our goal. Musically seamless, or seamless enough that the dancers won't notice. Let's check it out. Sounds pretty seamless to me on that one. So that's good. We're good to go. We pulled the chorus we pulled the second repeat of the chorus out of the final chorus. So now let's work our way over to the middle one. Now here's where we have to introduce another tool. And that is called ripple editing. We're going to be turning this one on and off as well. Let me show you what ripple editing does. So you get an idea of why we're doing this. If ripple editing is off like it is here, it's grayed out. If I slide, just left mouse click and hold this section and move it to the left, you see that this uh, area here, the end part of the song, doesn't move. In fact, let's do it with the snapping off so we can make fine movements. You see the left part moves, the right part just stays where it is. That can be good sometimes, but that can be really bad sometimes too. So what we want to do First off is we want to we want to undo what I just did there. Make sure everything is still. Okay, everything's pretty close. Now we want to come over to um, this second chorus where we want to cut that out, and we're going to click on the snap so that we everything is uh, clipped to the lines. And I'm going to come over here. And I am going to do the same thing we did before, cut selected area of items. However, this time, immediately after I do that, what do we do? Click in the middle so that they're unselected. 
But then I'm going to come over here to ripple editing. I'm going to click on that one time. And I am going to drag this section. And it pulled this section along with it. That's why we use ripple editing. Here's, I'm going to undo that. Here's what would have happened if I had not clicked on the ripple editing. Who knows? The back part's all by itself, and now the song's disconnected. So, ripple editing. Now pull that. Now we're going to zoom in to the seam. We want fine control, so we're going to undo snapping and see if it makes musical sense. Hmm. See, there's just a slight hiccup there. We're going to want to fix that. It can be done pretty easily. By the way, I turned off the metronome while I'm doing this because that's not going to be playing when you're dancing. That's just there for your reference. All right, so what we're going to do is zoom way in, and there's just a, there's a slight hiccup here. So with this snapping turned off, we're going to click, hold, and drag this just a little to the left. Now let's try again. Much better. Remember, while we're doing this, moving this stuff around, we have to have ripple editing on so that we don't uh, mess up what's going on over here. By the way, while you're doing all this, your original underlying file is still intact. So don't worry that you're messing up the, uh, the file. If you totally get screwed up, you can just um, start over again. Or at any point where you know everything was good, you can select just uh, the way you select everything in a track is uh, right mouse click and drag across all the items so everything's selected and we're gonna press the snap here double click in this blank space to make another track hold control down on your keyboard and then just drag this down and you've made a copy so it, now we know that it's correct to this point if you totally screw this up you can just delete it all and go back to the last place you know is right um, and then you're, what you're going to want to do as you continue to edit is mute that's what the M stands for this track is it's it's just our spare and then uh, I'm just going to shrink that track up so it's kind of out of the way okay now we're good to go with uh, the two choruses that we've done see how much shorter the song is already okay now we're gonna repeat that whole step a third time down here so I'm, I'm actually gonna do this uh, here because there's a lot of things you could possibly forget so the first thing is let's make sure that at this point in the song we have the ripple editing on make sure that it's to the click track so we're gonna turn the click track of the metronome back on <laughs> It sounds like it might be just a hair off. So I'm just I'm gonna turn snapping off. I'm gonna drag that right there. That's still a little off. Let's try that. Sounds much better. Okay. So let's go ahead and turn snapping back on. Come over to chorus number two, the marker there. And we are going to, by the way, when I make this selection here, I'm not clicking on the file itself, on the, uh, the item, the track itself. I'm clicking below it. Whenever, of course, you click on the item up here, it's going to move it around if you click and hold and drag. So what we want to do is click either up here, outside the track, or down here below it. Okay, so from two to three. Okay, with ripple editing off. You could do it with ripple editing on, but it just automatically closes the gap and you can, you can lose your place. Okay, so I'm going to cut the selected area. Okay, so now we can see where the cut occurred. Turn ripple editing back on. Drag everything. Ah, you know what I forgot to do? Undo first. I forgot to click in the middle to unselect. Keep doing that. Okay, 
So now with ripple editing on, you're going to drag this together and it pulls the rest of the song all to the right with it. We're going to test the scene to see if it musically makes sense. For this, we want to turn off the metronome. There may be a slight hiccup there too. So again, we're just going to sort of overlap these. Oh, can't do that with, we need fine precision here. So we're going to overlap that and it crossfades it automatically, which is great. So now let's check it out. Hmm, that looks like it might have come in just a little too soon that time. So I'm going to just sort of pull that back out. Okay, and now I'm going to extend this out so that the dance master or mistress has time to uh, get back to the dance. I'm going to listen to the whole thing and make sure that it makes sense. I'll listen through with you through the first chorus. Okay, so that was two verses. Chorus one. Don't pay attention to the markers anymore. And this will be chorus two. And now, verse. So each time the chorus plays, it only has two. That's excellent. Let's press escape to get rid of that. Let's zoom out of the whole thing. Now what we're going to do is save this. So just come up to File and go to Render in Audio and Video. Whenever you're saving, you're, you're actually rendering, I guess. So anyway, Render, you're going to want to use the defaults here. Make sure this says Stereo and um, put down where you want to save it. Put down what you want to call it and save it as a WAV file and click render and then it will save it to this uh, folder here and you're all done. Hopefully you found that helpful.